Hello my beautiful people, Janine here from That's Cakeable and in this week's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this very cute, sweet ice princess cake, including that adorable little topper. Every little girl at some point is going to ask for a princess cake, it's inevitable. So I've stripped this right back and made it super simple so anybody can make it. Well, no time like the present, let's get on with the tutorial. To make this cake, I'm using a six inch round cake, six inches high. If you wanna know how I cover my cakes for an eye sharp edge, I'll put a link in the description below and I will teach you how it's done. So I'm making the turrets using a PVC pipe here that's about two inches wide and I'm lining it with some cling wrap, just like that. Then I've taken some Rice Krispies and I've filled the PVC pipe with the Rice Krispies, pushing it all the way down, squish, squish, squish. And I'm using a small rolling pin to make sure it's nice and compact. There's lots of way to make turrets, but this is one way. Once that's all done, I popped it in the freezer to set up. Found it a little bit awkward to get out, so I'm showing you how I got it out, and this was quite simple. I just used my brulee torch to heat the outside of the PVC pipe and pushed it out with the small rolling pin. Unwrapped it, and I have the base for my turret. Now I've put a skewer up the center of the turret and placed it onto a cake dummy. And then I'm just taking some ganache. Yes, it's pink, but it was left over, so I thought I'd use it. And I'm just putting ganache all over that Rice Krispie turret and smoothing it out. Voila, set that aside. Now we're going to cover the turret. So I'm just taking some white fondant and rolling it out measuring it to make sure it's going to fit the entire turret, both around and lengthways. And then I cut off an edge to make a clean edge and the top edge I cut off also and roll our turret in there. And that's why it's good to have the skewer also for a bit of extra control. Making sure it's all covered, I cut off the excess. And then I just cut down the center there where the join is, remove the excess fondant there flip it up and remove the excess fondant from underneath. Once I've done that, I just push those two edges together and smooth it out. Cut the excess off the top also. Give it a roll, make sure it's nice and secure. Take my smoother to smooth it all out, make it all fancy, and that's the turret done. I went ahead and I did that again and made a slightly smaller turret. For the top of the turret, I've just taken some blue fondant and rolled it into a cone shape. Rolling it on the surface, rolling it around, making sure that the base is nice and flat. I did cut a little bit of extra off there. Just with a sharp knife, it was simple. And once I was happy with the shape, placed it on top of my turret, just like that. And that's the base of it, pretty much. Now I am taking this little cutter, I can't remember what it's called, I'll put a link in the description below, and I'm just making a little border to go around the edge of the turret. I will show you shortly how I use the cutter. Uh, I do it, do it again for the top of the cake. Wrap it around the turret with a little bit of water, cut off the excess, straighten it up, and it's done. Super simple. Now I've taken another piece of white fondant here. We're gonna start on the cake and I'm taking my acrylic ruler, which I love, a little thin one, and just cutting out a strip of white fondant. Now I'm just taking the uh, blunt side of a knife and making little sort of mark scores to make it look a little bit like bricks in that strip a bit of water around the base of my cake, and then I wrap that strip around the base. Cut off the excess at the back, and it's done. I'm keeping this super simple, okay? So I told you I'd show you how I use the cutters. Here's some white fondant and another one of those little border cutters. I place it on, and about two centimeters above the cutter, I cut it off. Remove that, I wanted to make it longer, so I just lined it up and did it again. Now this piece, which is a slightly different shape, is going to go at the top of the cake. 
Once again, a little bit of water on the top. I placed it on top there and fiddled around a little bit and eventually got it to stand up. This is why you want to make sure that this actual piece of embellishment, I guess, is not too thin or it will just droop. So make it quite thick. If you run out of pieces at the end, just cut some extras out and pop them on. Looks pretty seamless. Just took my smoother, smoothed it out and that part was done. You see how quickly this is coming together? Now attaching the turrets, I've just picked it up and popped it where I want it, just getting placement right, and I'm attaching it with a little bit of royal icing. Excuse the back of it, I squished it and messed it up. Someone was in a hurry, but um, yeah, don't do what I do. Make sure it's nice and neat. You will have to tease it on a little bit and hold it, but eventually it does sit. I did the same with the second turret at the front. Just gave it a little hug, look, giving it a little hug until it's set. Didn't take long. Oh, disclaimer, ignore that yellow finger. That's from the third degree burn from last week and it's a mess. So I've got some blue fondant here that I'm using a timber impression mat on. And then I'm using a circle cutter just to make a top arch. Then I'm cutting the sides straight. We're making a door by the way. And then I'm just cutting the base off, just cutting it to size. Use my Dresden tool and make a mark down the center of that door, just to make it look like, you know, double door. Two tiny little white pieces of fondant for the handles. Now, just like I did with the base of the cake, I'm taking some white fondant, rolled it into a really thin snake and then flattened it out instead of rolling it out taking the blunt side of my knife and scoring that again with tiny little bricks. Make sure I've got enough to wrap around that door. To pop the door on, I just add some water to the front of the cake and pop the door on. A bit of water around the archway and the sides and attach that tiny little brick border, cutting off any excess. That pink circle at the front of the cake used to show where the front of the cake was. I didn't need it anymore, but um, yeah, it's still there. It's hanging on. I wanted to make a couple of little steps that go away from the door, so I've just taken a thick piece of white fondant and cut it into a rectangle that matches up to around the same size as the door. And then I just smooth out the sides and arch it slightly. Now I place a little bit of water straight into the cake board under that door and attach the first step and then I've made a slightly smaller piece in exactly the same way and plop that on top. And we got steps. Now I've rolled out a thin piece of fondant and I've just made templates out of some cardboard, just freehanded it. Little arches for some windows. Went around with my X-Acto knife and cut them out. I did two larger ones and then I went ahead and did two slightly smaller ones, well, quite a bit smaller, for the turrets. With that excess fondant, I've taken a rectangular cutter and I'm just cutting out some rectangles to use as brick embellishments around the outside of the cake. Now just to tizzy up the windows a bit, I've taken a ruler and my Dresden tool and just crisscrossed those windows like that. For the smaller arch windows, I used the blunt side of my X-Acto blade because my Dresden tool was too thick. Now, just like I did around the door, I've taken some blue fondant this time, rolled it very thinly and flattened it out. And then with the blunt side of my X-Acto blade, made tiny little scores in that to make it look like bricks. Making sure that I've got enough to put around the outside of each window. Sorry, a little bit out of shot here, but you get the idea. And then slightly thicker pieces cut to the same size as the windows for little window panes, not window panes, you know, shelves. To attach the windows, I did exactly the same as I did with the door, a little bit of water, then around the edge for the little bit of brickwork. And then the little window ledge was the word I was looking for stuck underneath. 
window ledge, Janine. Ledge. Same for the large window, add as many windows or as few as you like. And then just a little bit of water sporadically around the cake, anywhere you like. And I've added those little pieces of rectangle fondant for bricks. Looks really crooked on screen, but um, in real life it looks much better. Whipped out the old airbrush and just did a pearl finish all the way over the cake. This is like an ice princess cake after all. And then went crazy with glitter all over the cake. And then I chose some blue glitter for the top of the turrets. I also added a couple of little flags there at the top. So that was the cake done. I'm gonna pop that aside and now we're going to move on to our cute little ice princess. So I've got a styrofoam ball here and I'm taking some modeling paste in a flesh tone and I'm rolling it into a ball slightly larger than the actual styrofoam ball. Then I'm encasing that ball inside the modeling paste, just like that. Squish it all up and roll it between my hands to make it nice and round. Then I just take my pinky finger and quite a long way down the bottom, like two thirds at least, I make a little divot there using my thumb also smoothing it out. You want the bottom section to be quite pronounced. So I'm sort of pushing it upwards there also. And that's basically your face. I'm taking a ball tool here and marking where I want the eyes to be. And then I push it in nice and deep. Not so deep that you hit the ball, of course, because that would be awkward. Now I've got no idea what this little tool is, but you can also use a straw sliced in half lengthways to sort of get the mouth or just cut it in yourself. And then a tiny dotting tool just to make little divots on the side of the mouth. And that's pretty much the face, ready to rock and roll. Two tiny little pieces of white fondant rolled into balls and I plop those into the eye sockets and push them down with my ball tool. Two even tinier pieces of black fondant will make the pupils of the eyes. Now at this point you wanna make them look cross-eyed. I know she's looking a bit weird right now, but trust me. Then take the ball tool and squash them out. See, it looks much better now. Now the scary part. Some edible art paint in black on a very fine brush. This is actually a nail art brush. And I just go across the top of the eye and flick it slightly outwards for a little bit of a lash. Did that on both sides, and then went in in a very awkward position, clearly, and made little eyelashes. Three would have been fine, but you know, I like to be extra. And there we go. A little bit of white edible art paint on the end of a dotting tool, which is just a tiny ball tool. And then I put some extra white catch lights in. I ended up with three of all different sizes. I don't know, it's a bit anime, I guess. Then I've got some petal dust in pink and I just blushed it onto her cheeks. My recommendation, as you can see here, is to make sure that the black paint is completely dry before you do this or you smudge it like I did. But anyway, we got there in the end. Some nice rosy cheeks. Now let's make her hair. So I've got some modeling paste in a very pale yellow and I'm just rolling out three tapered sausages, very little ones. And then I'm doing exactly as you would do with a plait in hair and plaiting it. All the way to the end. Once I get to the end, I just pinch it and then I just give it a very gentle roll on my mat. This sort of holds it all together. And then I attached it to the side of her head. I'm pretty sure I didn't use water for this. It was tacky enough after it had been in my hands, but if it won't stick, of course you can use a little bit of water. And there we go, her plait is on. Now to make the rest of her hair, I'm taking another piece of that same colored modeling paste and rolling it into a round that's slightly larger than her head. And I'm going to attach that with some water, place it on top of her head so it looks a little bit like a cap, just like that and then pinch at the back. We're going to add some detail here so you won't really see the seam and cut off the excess with a small pair of scissors. I then just use my finger to smooth that down a little bit. Lift it up the top bits of the cap at the front there and that will help support her little fringe. 
and with my Dresden tool just made a line down the center and lines all at the side for a bit of hair texture. And there we go. Now just to tizzy it up a little bit more, this is completely optional, totally up to you. But I've made some sort of tapered carrot size, not carrot size, carrot shape pieces of the same colored modeling paste. And I'm placing that around the front of her face for a little fringe. I just smoothed out the top of that with my Dresden tool, sort of blending it into that center part we'd made. Right there. And that's her head done. Super simple. Now let's make the body, which we're also going to keep simple. We're going to roll a piece of blue fondant into a blunt teardrop shape, I would say. A blunt cone, blunt teardrop. Pushing it down to make sure the bottom's nice and flat. Just like that. You wanna make it quite squat, short. Then I'm taking my Dresden tool and I'm making marks up the front. Just like that, making sure you grab the bottom section there. This is the pleats. Then at the back, then on either side. Then I just take my fingers and round out those bottom sections. Just so it doesn't look as harsh. That is the bottom of the dress done. To make her body section, I've just taken a piece of flesh colored fondant and rolled it into a teardrop shape that I've flattened and placed on top of the body. And then I just sort of sculpt the sides in, push the sides in to make a waist area and blend the bottom of the paste onto the skirt, just like that. Now to make the top of the dress, I'm taking another piece of blue fondant and rolling it into pretty much an oval shape or thereabouts, making sure it's gonna wrap all the way around that body and then just cut out a triangular section at the bottom, I guess. With the point of the triangle at the very front, I wrap that around the top of the body, pushing down the side bits to make sure it's all covered. And then I cut in the center at the top on either side into a little V. Then I just cut the excess off the back, just like we did with the hair on the head, smooth it out a little bit and then cut the top off just to neaten it up. Could it get any more simple, guys? That's it. Then just two little long teardrop shapes or carrot shapes, and we're going to use blue fondant once again, and these are for her sleeves, measuring, measuring them, sorry, against the side of the dress. And then I just pop a little hole in the bottom of each one, roll some of the flesh colored fondant into teardrop shapes, pinching off the end there because it's far too long. And then I just pop that into the hole that we made in the sleeve and gently flatten it out. And that's her hands. I just attach those to the side of the dress at about shoulder height with a little bit of water. Ta-da! She's not a nice princess if she's not sparkly, right? So a little bit of piping gel on the bodice of the dress and some glitter just to sparkle her up. And that is ready. Now I've popped a skewer through her body long enough that it goes through the cake and a bit sticking up to support her head. Positioned it on the cake and then pushed that skewer through and then plopped her head right on top. And that is it guys, that's how you make this cute little castle cake with an adorable ice princess topper. See, told you it was simple. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me again this week. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel by hitting that button just down there and click the notification bell so that you're informed every time I upload a new video. Well, that's it for this week. And um, now you know what you've got to do. <laughs> It's time for you to go and get your cake on. I will see you next time, guys. Bye. Let it go, let it go. Sorry, you're still here. <laughs>